Sir, could you tell us more about yourself? Uh, let me just briefly introduce myself. My name is Anand Narayanan. Um, I teach and I do research in astrophysics at the Indian Institute of Space, Science and Technology in Tiruvannandapuram, in Trivandrum, which is the capital of Kerala. A little bit about uh, my background. I, uh, after finishing plus two, I did my undergraduate B.Tech in electrical and electronics engineering. But I always had a fascination for physics. So I, after finishing my B.Tech in engineering, I switched over to astrophysics. I did my master's and my PhD in astrophysics from Pennsylvania State University uh, in the U.S. And then I was working for about two years as a scientist in University of Wisconsin, Madison. Uh, again, as an astro astrophysicist for about two years. And uh, 2010, I joined the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology. And for the past 10 years, I've been working here. So here I teach and I do research in astrophysics. Good evening, sir. My name is Abdul Hadi. Yes. Good evening. Uh, so this is the first question which was given to you, sir. How old is the universe? The research in astrophysics of the last uh, 100 years or so ha uh, has told us that our universe had a beginning and uh, ever since then our universe has been evolving and uh, today the age of the universe is 13.7 billion years. So that is 13.7 into uh, 1 followed by 9 zeros. So that is 13, or you can approximate it as 14 billion. Okay, no, once you are in the realm of billions, it doesn't matter whether it's 13.7 or 14. So that's 14 followed by nine zeros. That is how old our universe is. That means that everything that is part of our universe is younger than that, is, is, uh, is of, uh, has an age that is lesser than that. For example, our solar system, sun and all the planets, that uh, and everything, uh, comets, asteroids, etc., that is part of solar system. Solar system is much younger when compared to the age of the universe. The solar system is about 5 billion years old, whereas the universe is 14 billion. Okay, that's roughly the age. So, that's the answer to Abdul's question of how old is our universe. Greetings, sir. Uh, I'm F. Teddy Samson. Sir, my question is uh, why did the Big Bang take place, sir? What was the reason? So, uh, there, is, there are multiple lines of evidences that indicate that our universe had an origin. Okay? So, what that means is that our universe is not infinitely old. There was a moment of creation. There was a moment of origin. Okay? And that moment of origin is what is very loosely termed as the Big Bang, a word that you used. Okay? It's very loosely termed. Is Big Bang. Now, uh, big, sir, for Big Bang is the point corresponding to time t is equal to zero seconds. Okay? So, time itself started from Big Bang and ever since then the universe has been evolving. So, that means that all the things in the universe, uh, the stars, the planets, galaxies, uh, interstellar medium, uh, this uh, asteroids, meteors, which you talked about, Teddy, uh, Earth, all the things that we see around us, they were all created after this Big Bang. Okay? So this Big Bang is that moment of creation, the, mo the, the moment when the universe started. And unfortunately, all the laws of physics that we use to understand the universe. Okay? So astrophysics, so, uh, since I mentioned that I work in the field of astrophysics, let me just explain what astrophysics is. Astrophysics is a way of looking at the world around us and more importantly, the world above us through the prism of physics. Okay? So we, we live in a physical universe. We are surrounded by uh, objects and when we look into the space, we see planets, moon, stars, countless number of stars, untold number of stars we see, and we see the vastness of empty space. Now, how can we understand it? There are many ways to understand it. One way of understanding our universe and our own place in this universe is to use physics as a framework. We use the laws of physics. So astrophysics is a way of looking at the universe, understanding the universe, using physics as the uh, medium. Now, physics has a scientific discipline, so it has some theories 
that are built into it there are some ideas for example gravity is a idea that's a concept that's a theory that is uh, within that's part of physics uh, there are many forces that we talk about we talk about electromagnetic force we talk about magnetic force things like that these are all part of physics i'm sure you are some of you are studying physics so all these laws of physics that we use to understand our universe okay all these laws of physics were born after the universe was born and therefore it's it becomes very difficult for us to explain the moment of creation or the moment of origin of this universe using the laws of physics it's almost impossible to explain the origin or the beginning of the universe using the laws of physics uh, all laws of physics break down uh, once we reach that point of origin of the universe therefore to coming back to your question teddy okay why did the big bang happen i think that's what you had asked uh, the answer is that the scientific answer is we do not know why the big bang happened all we know is that there was a um, there was a point in time and space when the entire universe evolved okay and that is uh, what we refer to as the big bang we cannot define what exactly triggered the big bang or what exactly happened at the time of big bang what we can uh, rather study or predict is what happened subsequent to the big bang what happened following the big bang so let me just share a slide and i'll just try to explain that okay the slide is visible yes sir yeah. yes sir yeah so there's a lot of things written in this slide you don't need to get uh, you don't need to worry about all the things that is written there's a lot of detail here but what uh, what this picture is showing us it's a uh, showing us timeline of the cosmic history from the beginning of the universe to the present okay a very very sweeping summary a very brief overview of the uh, evolution that happened to the universe from the moment of what that we refer to as the big bang so if you look at the top part there is an arrow mark that says the big bang okay so that corresponds to that moment of uh, creation or what we refer to as the big bang we do not even know whether it was an explosion okay because we there is no way for us to understand that moment of creation but since then okay there was a brief period when a uh, matter was created okay uh, fundamental particles like protons neutrons electrons were created from even fundamental uh, more fundamental particles all these particles were created out from energy so energy was converted into a uh, matter and then that was followed by a period that is known as the dark ages and that's what this blue part of it the the diagram shows it's called the dark ages because this was a time period when there were no stars or galaxies and that that continued for about 500 million years after big bang so for 500 million years there were no stars or galaxies the universe was dark in the sense that there was only matter and radiation there were no luminous objects there were no bright objects then the first generation of stars formed and galaxies formed that is what this yellow part corresponds to okay the the first stars and galaxies started forming and since then the stars and galaxies have been grouping together to form bigger and bigger systems and today as of, as we speak the present universe is roughly 13 to 14 billion years that's what is drawn at the bottom of this picture and in today's universe when we look at the night sky we see countless number of stars and we if we look deeper we see also see galaxies okay so there's a vast universe that we live in but the universe has always been not like this in the past as we look uh, uh, backwards in space we are also looking backwards in time so as we look deeper and deeper into the universe we are looking into the past history of the universe and when we look deep into uh, the universe we find that the early universe was very different from the present universe okay so this is in a nutshell what it is sir uh, my next question is what are the recent developments in astrophysics sir there are many okay there are many recent developments um, i don't think i will be able to uh, list out all of them but let me tell you a couple of things okay so in the last 25 years one of the big realizations that has dawned on uh, that has come to us because of hard research in astrophysics is the realization that there are planets there are planets revolving around other stars 
our solar system is not the only system with planets around it we, in the sky we see uh, untold number of stars there are innumerable number of stars in the sky and astronomers have discovered that many of these stars have planets revolving around them just like sun has planets revolving around the sun so these planets are collectively called extra solar planets or exoplanets for short and the first discovery of an extra solar planet happened in the year 1995 and since then 25 years have gone by now we are in 2021 in these 25 years astronomers have discovered more than 4300 extra solar planets orbiting various stars so research in this field is telling us that probably every star that we see in the night sky has one or more planets revolving around it it's only a matter of discovering them in other words there are probably more planets than stars in our universe so whenever we look at the night sky okay the twinkling stars that we see uh, there are probably planets revolving around them so this is very exciting because it really increases the odds of finding an earth like planet around a star that is potentially habitable okay where life can arise and life can evolve so one of the big questions and the one of the big unknown or unsolved questions in all of science and all of human endeavor is whether we are alone in this universe or could there be life elsewhere in the universe now within the solar system we are able to directly go to planets like mars venus we are able to go to some of the moons of planets like europa moons of jupiter moons of saturn etc and we search for life and so far we have not been able to find conclusive evidence for the presence of life outside of earth within the solar system but solar system is a very 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 small place in the vast universe the vast cosmos there are uh, billions of stars in our universe and each if each one of them has planets around it then it, the chances of any so one of one or more of those planets so some of those planets uh, having liquid water and maybe the presence of life you know that increases so this discovery of extra solar planet and what it means to the larger question of whether there could be life elsewhere in the universe that is one big development that has happened in astrophysics the other big development is the detection of something called gravitational waves uh, if you have been reading news articles you may have seen this so gravitational waves are ripples in space so if you think of space as a fabric as i mentioned earlier when you have a large amount concentration of mass or when you have a violent activity happening in some part of space it can send ripples in space so for a very long time uh, physicists had theoretically predicted that we should be these ripples in space should be detectable but in the recent past we have detected gravitational waves so this has opened up a whole new window of research in in uh, in in astrophysics then there are many other things okay i can go on and on but uh, yeah just two of them would be enough for now i guess yes sir uh, sir the next question is what single project or uh, or task would you consider the most uh, significant accomplishment or one of your uh, best achievement in your career so far sir Hmm. okay so i'll just explain a bit about my research work okay to to the the best possible extent i can so my work involves using telescopes uh, to collect light from gas very diffuse gas that is present inside galaxies and outside of galaxies okay so galaxies are these huge collections of stars our own sun belongs to a galaxy which we refer to as the milky way and the milky way is a collection of 200 billion stars and lot of gas and dust so similarly there are many galaxies in our universe so how did these galaxies acquire this gas and stars etc how did stars form in them and what is present outside of galaxies outside of galaxies is it mostly empty space or is there matter present this is the kind this is the broad research question that i have been addressing through for the last more than 10 years or 15 years of my career and uh, for this work i have been using some of the largest uh, telescopes that are there on ground and also some space based telescopes like the hubble space telescope and i have been using these telescopes to look at gas very diffuse gas that is not very bright okay it's not emitting much light outside of galaxies 
and the reason why it is important to study this gas is because our uh, our observations or our experiments show that uh, more than 90% of the ordinary matter in our universe is not inside galaxies but it lives outside galaxies in a very diffuse form so in my own research work i have been able to discover reservoirs of this gas outside of galaxies okay, reservoirs of ordinary matter outside of galaxies which has added an essential level of detail into our understanding of how matter is organized in our universe so that's uh, in a very simple terms that's what it is sir could you tell us more about the career opportunities in the platform of astrophysics Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the pathway that you have to choose if you want to become an astrophysicist is you have to take uh, physics, chemistry, mathematics, and if possible, computer programming in your class eleven and twelve. So if your school offers those choices, then you should take physics, chemistry, and mathematics for sure because the the a good understanding of physics and mathematics is what you need to if you are aspiring for a career in science okay then after class 12 you have two options one is you can either go into the engineering stream or you can go into uh, higher education in basic sciences when i say basic sciences i mean physics or mathematics uh, and then uh, continue along that engineering i mean uh, different engineering disciplines like civil engineering computer science engineering electronics and communication engineering and so on and so forth some of you may have the sisters and brothers or nephews uh, or, or cousins etc who are doing all these things okay so 11th and 12th you have to take physics chemistry and mathematics if you are thinking about a career in astrophysics and then you know you have to prepare for the je main exam or the you know along with it you also can prepare for state level entrance examinations okay and uh, state level entrance examinations will give you admission to several national state engineering colleges je main you know you once you clear it you can also write je advanced and which will uh, give you admissions to some of the institutes of national importance like iits the indian institute of technology and even the place where i am working indian institute of space science and technology is called iist we also take students after plus 2 uh, if they have successfully completed je main and je advanced okay some colleges take admission admit students just based on je main some places require je advanced also okay so usually this engineering education is for 4 years there are many colleges i'll just skip this uh, you can also choose a uh, go for basic science education so you can write one of these exams kvpy or je advanced or icer aptitude test or neet etc and you can join what is known as dual degree programs okay bs ms program bs stands for bachelor of science and ms stands for master of science so there are many uh, big institutes in india all over india that offer this bs ms program for students who are completing plus 2 and who want to go into sciences to get admission to these bsms programs you have to clear any one of these exams you don't have to write all of them okay you have to write either je advanced or you have to write this kvpy or icer aptitude test or neet etc uh, you can uh, research on this online a little bit more uh, i am not going to tell you all the details of what neet is and what i uh, icer aptitude test is it's all available online and these bs bs integrated programs are there in many institutes of national importance it's there in indian institute of science it's also there in indian institute of science education and research it's called icers there are seven icers then uh, iist our college also offers this dual degree programs iits nits offer them then you have nicers and institutes like that so what i'm just telling you is that there are about a dozen places there are about more than 10 places in india where you can get admission to if you want to go into this bsms path this is different from engineering because here here you will be studying pure science physics chemistry biology mathematics etc uh, that's what you need so if you want a career in astrophysics then you should have a fascination for physics chemistry mathematics and you should also try to pick up some skills in computer programming okay 
so you have a long uh, time for that but right now from higher secondary school from class 11 or 12 itself or maybe from high school itself if you can teach yourself a little bit of computer programming that will be very good uh, and equally importantly you should have a fascination for physics chemistry and mathematics and the other things that you should uh, do is uh, you should also cultivate an ability to write well uh, more and more you know when you apply for higher education you will have to explain in writing why you want to go for higher education you have to write an essay that explains why you are choosing to go for science higher education uh, and sometimes your admissions are based on these essays also and once you become a scientist you know you have to write a lot uh, about uh, whatever work you are doing so right from school years itself if you can cultivate this ability to articulate your ideas in the form of written words and in also in the form of spoken words so if you can cultivate an ability to speak well uh, cultivate a, a skill uh, or build on a skill to or sort of develop the skill to express yourself well articulate yourself well that is also going to be a very very important tool uh, or very important skill that you should have if you are aspiring for a research and or teaching career in science and in addition to that you should have a keen interest in books and reading so uh, as i mentioned you know once in a while you can put your cell phone away uh, you can stop watching movies on netflix or amazon or something like that and you can pick up a book and start reading it uh, maybe not from cover to cover but at least read through some significant some chapters of the book and if you find it interesting you can read it from cover to cover you can read newspaper you should start cultivating the habit of reading science journals okay all these things you can do so that's all a long answer for a short question but thank you sir good day we are the students of grade 12 and for this year's project day we are here to provide a little more insight to the topic careers in space and astrophysics the astronomy institutes in india that are fostering in space education an education in space and astronomy is not the most professional degree that one could acquire most of it can be attributed to an individual's own desire to learn about this field GOI mainly supports the education sector around the astronomy in India and there is rarely any private endeavor in this space. Yet these institutes, yet these ten institutes in India have greatly contributed to space education on the formal level. Number one, Arya Bhatta Research Institute of Operation Observational Sciences, Nainita. Number two, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Bangalore. Number three, Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research. Number four, Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, Trivandrum. Number five, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Number six, Inter University Centre for Astronomy and Astrophysics. Number seven, National Centre for Radio Astronomy, Pune. Number eight, Physical Research Laboratory, Ahmedabad. Number nine, Radio Astronomy Centre, Uti. Number ten, Brahman Research Institute, Bangalore. A PhD in astronomy or astrophysics opens up several career opportunities. You can become a university professor, a full-time researcher at an observatory, and even a data scientist. Since astronomy and astrophysics are heavily reliant on mathematics, computer science, and statistics, fields that are highly dependent on astrophysics include structural and stress engineering, guidance and navigation control systems, and telecommunications. non rmd job positions in astrophysics include atmospheric scientist plasma physicist mechanical engineer meteorologist photographer and technical writer in addition to common career opportunities available for astrophysicists uh, which include uh, working in research labs as scientists and working in industries like aerospace industries uh, uh, teaching in universities uh, finance etc there is an extended opportunity for astrophysicists to become successful entrepreneurs so nowadays in india the career opportunities for an astrophysicist in governmental organizations are limited 
and also uh, opportunity for an astrophysicist in corporate and private sector companies are highly competitive so under such circumstances uh, there is enormous scope for an astrophysicist to become a successful entrepreneur and uh, there are certain skills which integrate astrophysicist into entrepreneurship uh, those skills are taught uh, when we opt for a degree in astrophysics uh, uh, such extremely valuable skills are uh, necessary to anyone contemplating a startup uh, some of those skills include uh, quantitative skills and the instinct to see world uh, in terms of things that can be measured uh, uh, ability to modify complex systems with simple ones testing hypothesis by conducting experiments uh, to prove or disprove something and uh, uh, data science and analysis expertise uh, that an astrophysicist uh, or scientist use in his or her daily work uh, could be applied to solve countless existing and emerging uh, data challenges in the world of entrepreneurship business is a risky occupation of course being an entrepreneur is a risky occupation but it is not so for everyone uh, particularly it is not so for an astrophysics uh, graduate because uh, analytical uh, reporting mathematical problem solving uh, logical and creative thinking skills uh, that an astrophysicist possesses make them into uh, successful entrepreneurs Let's see about career in space. Astronomy. It is a study of everything beyond Earth's atmosphere. Astronauts. They conduct experiments and gather information while in spacecraft. Space technology. Technology for use in travel or activities beyond Earth's atmosphere. Engineering. Aerospace engineering is the primary field of engineering concerned with the development of aircraft and spacecraft. Space research or academics. Space research is scientific study carried out in outer space and by studying outer space. Space law. Space law can be described as a body of law governing space related activities. Space tourism. It is the practice of traveling into space for recreational purposes. Space architecture. It is the theory and practice of designing and building inhabited environments in outer space. Space medicine or psychology. Aerospace physicians support the health, safety and well-being of pilots, air crews and astronauts. Thank you. Why astronomy? By studying the cosmos beyond your own planet, we can understand where we came from, where we are going and how physics works under conditions which are impossible to recreate on Earth. In astronomy the universe is our laboratory. Astronomy is also breaking new records every day by establishing the furthest distances, most massive objects, highest temperatures and most violent explosions. In recent years undergraduates have participated in research in the following fields: the Milky Way and the local group of galaxies, high energy astrophysics, including black holes and clusters of galaxies astronomy instrumentation especially detectors of infrared light star formation in other galaxies let us talk about the topic space law objects launched into space are subject to the nations of belonging including people objects parts and components discovered outside the jurisdiction of a nation will return upon identification If a nation launches an object into space, they are responsible for any damages that occur internationally. Outer space is governed by international law. That means all the countries and parties need to work together to develop effective space legislation for the future needs. 107 countries are party to the Constitution of International Space Law, the 1967 Outer Space Treaty. Space law addresses a variety of matters such as for example the preservation of the space and earth environment liability for damages caused by space object the settlement of dispute the rescue of astronaut the sharing info of information about the potential dangers in the outer space the use of the spore space related that's all thank you It is important to find a career that interests you, but money also matters. Hence, 
Here are some popular jobs in astronomy that also pay well. Number one is the senior technical writer at around $80,000 per year. This is mainly for those with extensive knowledge in a particular field. They write research, grant proposals, and collaborate with other research scientists to write peer reviews. Number two, college professors at around 84,000 per year. Those with astronomy degrees have the eligibility to work as college professors. Number three, planetarium director at around 85,000 per year. This naturally appeals to people who have a talent for leading. They have a passion for science and often have strong connections with others in the aerospace community. They have distinguished scientific careers and their extensive knowledge of the industry and strength as researchers is used to carry out the museum's mission. Number four, meteorologist at around 86,000 per year. These are people who study the Earth's atmosphere to forecast weather conditions using mathematical and physical formulations. Number five, research scientists at around 88,000 per year. These are critical thinkers who work in labs and for agencies to conduct research designed to accomplish an important common goal. Number six, climatologists at around 94,000 per year. Careers in this involve a focus on long-term weather patterns in specific areas. These people examine factors that influence weather over the course of decades, mainly over a 30-year cycle. They can also work as weather forecasters or developers of new measurement tools. Number seven, aeronautical engineers at around 99,000 per year. These people design the structure and operating functions of spacecrafts and satellites, but they can also design the space missions itself. Number eight, astronomer at 111,000 per year. These people do various tasks related to the analysis of objects in space and the creation of theories about them. Number nine, astrophysics at around 119,000 per year. These are well-rounded scientists who are often employed in universities performing scholarly research. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. Thank you once again.